And I'm here with Laurie, and we're going to be talking about um, the idea of writing poetry, like especially like almost writing to task to some level, and like how quickly we can come up with writing new ideas, and just in general writing spoken words. So, like one of the one of the reasons why I want to talk to you about this because like you um, have done the poetry takeaway a couple of times. Yeah. So can you just describe to people what the poetry takeaway is? So I would say poetry takeaway is. Um, Essentially, getting in a big burger van, usually usually a burger van, yeah. um, um, driven by the lovely Michael Bolger, and we um, get in the van, people come up to you, and they give you a brief to write to a poem uh, that could be anything. So that I've had like pretty diverse briefs, <laughs> as you would say. Uh, the first one I ever had was uh, write about a Scotch egg, um, and probably the most complica- complicated or, or difficult one I've ever had was... Um, and it was a, a fascinating brief. Uh, this this mum comes up and goes, oh, my kid wants a, wants a poem. She's really into horses. And I go, okay, this will be fun. I've got poems about horses. I can do animals. <laughs> yeah. um, and the girl comes up and, go, uh, and goes, uh, I'm, I'm 12 years old and uh, I'm, I'm uh, transgender. Um, and I'm dealing, dealing with, with that, with my family, with my, with my friends and, and with school. Um, can you write about that? And it's, wow, okay, you don't want a poem about horses. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it's, that, that's what I would say it involves. Yeah. Cause, like, um, like how difficult is it for you to be writing to briefs and short, short space of time? Cause like, especially with the approach takeaway stuff, you'll get about 10 minutes talking to the person. Yeah. Then you've got about 20 minutes to write a poem for them. So how difficult do you how find that? How difficult is it? Um, pretty, pretty difficult. <laughs> um, I don't know. I had a had my background. Um, I, I I worked as a copyright for a while, yeah. so that is a lot like writing on brief. Um, you're you're given something to write and you do it. And doing it with poetry is kind of similar in that respect. You're still writing uh, to to what somebody's telling you, but the real kind of job and the big difference is you have to get that brief out of them. So it's all about in, it's all about the interview. It's all about those few, usually minutes, sometimes seconds, <laughs> yeah. in which it's what do you want a poem about. And, and also, like, tonally what they're after. Are they after something funny? Are they after something that's, you know, a bit more emotional or serious? And, and dealing with that, and, um, like, I interview a lot in my, in my current job, and that, that kind of skill of kind of, okay, I need to work out how, who I'm talking to, how I'm going to get what, what I need to get out of them, and how to present that back to them. And sometimes it's literally taking the words straight out of their mouth, <laughs> writing them down. They go, wow, you're, you're such a good writer. And yeah. you're like, you literally just told me exactly <laughs> yeah. what I've written on the page. Yeah. And this could have been my notes. <laughs> cool. like, obviously, that's a very like, specific example of writing poetry. But like, how would you describe your normal writing process then? Okay, so outside, like, when out, I just out, wrote out, my own... Outside of the poetry takeaway, okay. outside, people come up to you go, write me a poem about being trans. Okay, my, my, <laughs> my normal process uh, of writing is... Uh, slow. So <laughs> I um, usually come up with an idea or something comes into my head like when I'm usually about to go to bed, usually when the lights are already off and I'm like, oh crap, I'm get up again now, find my notepads and, and start writing it down. I've taken to like keeping my notepad by my bed because when I'm about to go to sleep, stuff happens in your brain that like yeah. doesn't, connections start forming. So literally I'll like think of a line or like a title, often a title or it's usually actually the last line that comes first. Um, almost always the last line that comes first. And then I work backwards from there. It's very rare that I like don't know where the poem is going to. I usually know where it's going to end. And it, then it's working out where how do I, how do I get there. Um, so that's how I structure them. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, I used to write lots of rhythmic poems. I, yeah. I do that a bit now, but probably a little bit more pagey. Um, and with that, I always kind of knew I wanted like a chorus or something like that. I always treat writing... Uh, poetry, particularly like those early poems, like like pop songs, yeah. I'm way more interested. <laughs> uh, not uh, to be a massive philistine, I've always been more interested in in pop music That's than, fine. than That's uh, fine. like poetry as such. That's fine. Like, so it's about how do I make that engaging, and and it's about those. I, I like to use pop song structures, so it's like verse, chorus, verse, chorus. We yeah, like pop songs. Are valuable for a reason. Like their pop, their whole point of pop is popular. There's a, there's a reason why it's popular. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, that's right. And there's I'm, hooks. Yeah, there's hooks, and like it's. Like, especially like I like, talking to, like just in your stuff in general, there's a lot of likability and like I think a lot of accessibility in the stuff you write, and I think that like the pop, the pop music background that like, gives it I, I can understand that a bit more, and it gives it a lot more. So, okay, I can understand how it leads to that. Like, <laughs> does that make any sense? Like, no, that, makes, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Like, one of the things I find interesting about what you're saying is the fact that you think of the last line first. It's like I come about it a very different. How do you do? It? Um, 
a lot of the times, like, so for the, mo- for the it depends on the poem. Like, for the most part, I'll think about what is the concept, what am I writing about? So I won't necessarily sit down and say, I want to write a black poem or something like that. Yeah. But we're, we're just, in thinking of ideas, like, I want to write a poem about this experience. Okay. So I won't think of necessarily the last line, but I'll think about the rough story progression mm. first. Like, where am I going with this poem? So I know roughly where I'm aiming towards, yeah. but not specifically the last line. But um, also at the same time, though, one of the things I... Especially with a Napo Rimo, yeah. I challenge myself, and I've which I've been doing for the past three years now, is I come up with a title first, yeah, and go from the title yeah. outwards. Especially because, like, especially with my writing, what I've been doing of for the past three or four years now is every single one of my poems has a title that is either a film or TV reference. Yeah, yeah, I know that about, <laughs> about your poems. So like, sometimes I get them, not yeah. always. <laughs> but like, so, so like, but like, and like, obviously it won't always be like, uh, like having to see overt and stuff like that. Like, was it my Sherlock Holmes poem? Is this called Sherlock Holmes? Yeah, it can be as simple as that. But like, I've got a poem about being black, which is called Blackish, named yeah. after the TV show. But yeah. it's like, it just I just find that as an, especially like it was an easy way for me to catalog poems. Like I don't, not that I don't give much credence to the title, but title. Mm for me is never the most important thing because it's an easy way of keeping track of everything. No. But so for Napo Rhyme, what I was doing was like, I'm going to think of a TV film quote and then work backwards from that. So I've got my quote. Yeah. Now how can I work on that? I always find titles really interesting and like uh, uh, quite a few of my poems like early on actually, um, but still now actually, is, is I'll have a title for it and then I'll, I, actually what often happens is, so I've got that idea, I've got, yeah. I've got what I'm going to write, <clears throat> vaguely what I'm going to write about, I might have that last <clears throat> line. Um, and what I'll then do is start to sketch around it and, and try <clears throat> and try and find a way into it. Often it's a rhythm, actually. Yeah. So it'll be a case of like, for example, there's a song in my head, like an actual song that already exists. Yeah. And something about the rhythm of that song will just like click and I'll go, I want to write something that's got some, yeah. something that's vaguely along that, that rhythm. And often the rhythm and the, and the actual content of the poem, I'll try and match up. Sometimes they, they, they don't work at all. Sometimes I've literally like taken a poem, completely canned everything about it except the rhythm <laughs> yeah. and gone, that's nice. I'm going to keep that and yeah. use that for something later, um, which I have, have done. And, and, you know, sometimes... I've, I've read, I wrote one poem which uh, was about uh, a high school crush yeah. um, and I wrote it and it was okay and I kind of liked it but I never, I never really, like I performed it once or twice, didn't really like it and then uh, a few months later I met the same person again in a completely different context and suddenly you've got the ending yeah. of the poem that's never yeah. had, had that yeah. happened before and I, you just chuck it out and I had to rewrite the entire <laughs> entire thing except a few lines and a bit of the rhythm <clears throat> and everything else can, yeah. come together so, no, yeah. like, not exactly that, but like um, I know I've got a couple of poems like, about my dad and like there was a poem I used to do about my dad back mm. in the day which was um, describing the word father yeah in, which, in the whole like, poem ended on the fact like, like I've not seen him for however long yeah then I saw him for my next for, for like another birthday I was like well that poem's gone exactly. now it's like, yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah, it's like new poem now here we go yeah well that's it and it's suddenly you you have the, the story's continued and the ending that you had isn't necessarily what you want to say yeah. anymore so you have to not ne- you don't have to but if you're interested <laughs> in it you you want to put that final chapter yeah. in i think um so for you like how much of your writing and like when you when you write stuff is solo and individual how much of it like is it is it helped by communities or groups or workshops because obviously like yeah there's obviously a lot, there's a few workshops going on there's mm. a few communities out there so is your stuff mainly like does it change too much if it's just written by yourself or with communities as well that's a good question so i usually like we're really going through like the process i like it oh, yeah. so I've, I've gone like i've gone like i've been asleep i've come up with the title like wake up <laughs> I then usually sit down with uh, with my laptop, or I used to run a typewriter because I'm just oh, old such school. A, yeah, old school. Yeah, old school. <laughs> um, yeah, so you uh, write it up, and and I will literally like sit down and go right. I've got two hours or three hours. I'm going to write, um, and I start to to put it together. Um, drink a lot of a lot of tea, <laughs> a lot of tea. If 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 I'm you know if I'm in the mood, a lot of tea and whiskey, and just Ooh. alternate between the two until like I've got something that I feel like I want to share with people. Um, and doing like that pop song structure, literally, you've got a certain number of lines or a certain number yeah. of stuff that you need to get there. And if I haven't got it, I'm not ready to share it, unless it's a page poem, which is like different. Then, then I'll start. Then I'll workshop it. And I, I've I've workshop stuff like. Since I st- since I went to university, like I, I joined uh, my university's creative writing society, ended up running it actually, um, which had two workshops a week, um, and that 
process of sharing work is amazingly uh, helpful and actually I've recently started doing that again with with, with friends and, and just seeing seeing the work progresses it's it you realize that that thing that you thought was interesting that doesn't work no, or no, that, no, no, that, that, that. That, uh, oh god one of my poems like recently I'm just like geez I've got to cut like half of it <laughs> because it's just not interesting and, yeah. and the and the and the poem itself holds together without half the lines in it so so like, um, then to finish this up then, like um, in terms of, so partly just out of your experience as well, like what advice you tell people like when they're writing, because obviously like, you have some people that go through writer's block and some people that's just in general looking for more things to write about. So like yeah. what tips would you say on a more general level would you give to them, whether it be specific tips of here's the way to write or on a broader level, like go to writing work, et cetera, what would be your pieces of advice? Okay, so I'm going to give like a couple of pieces. Yeah. Uh, one which I kind of discovered really recently, and it's so dumb. Uh, I was listening to uh, a Henry Rowland's podcast, um, and uh, he was talking about uh, how when he asked for advice on writing, uh, and someone just said, "Write more, uh, yeah. write more." Yeah. And since then, I've like bought diary, mm. uh, like journals, and I'm I'm writing every day in them, like which I've never done before. Yeah. Like this is a big new thing uh, for me, and it sounds so simple, but. Mm. It's just no like yeah. anything. What you did, if you've got writer's block, write about why you've got writer's block or, yeah. or what and how did you feel. What's the struggle? What yeah. Yeah. So that's number one. Write more. Mm-hmm. Number two, um, I would say is probably, and this is something that, like, uh, I think, I've come to sort of realize is, when I started, I did rhythmic poetry, mm-hmm. and I consider myself as somebody who does that. Mm-hmm. Now I try and do other stuff. I write a lot that's a bit more sort of broad or like uh, more pagey, I guess, um, because I was get I was using the rhythms because I was too worried to put it out there without it mm-hmm. and worried that actually the writing itself wasn't wasn't strong enough. Whereas what I'm realizing more and more is actually like it's really cool getting up on stage. And nobody knows quite what's going to come out of your mouth. Yeah. Like I've spoken to your your mum actually about <laughs> this, and she's just been like, so I I often think you're going to come out and do something ridiculously silly and and, and yes. fun, and, you know, and then you come up and do do like a death poem or something, <laughs> and it's just like yeah. harrow. I don't know. Like I I love that kind of unpredictability mm. of like getting up on stage, and I'm like. I could really fuck with you like, yes. if I wanted to, or I could do something really nice yes. and just like, I th- what I'm trying to say in terms of advice is you can write about anything and don't feel like you're restricted to writing in one particular style or one particular, about one particular thing. Makes sense. Cool. Cool. Like, um, like, there's not really much I can add to that. Like, I, like one, of the, one of the things I remember um, is like free writing is always a helpful thing. Mm. But I think like just in, like so go, that goes on to your idea of like just keep writing, always keep writing. Yeah. Also, so one of the main advice I see quite a lot, which I think I have to agree with as well, is like don't be so precious about your writing. No, definitely mm. not. Like, because like, I think that that like part of the writer's block is not necessarily that you can't write. It's like you're thinking stuff to write, but you're thinking that's not good enough. It's like does it one does it have to be all the time? Well, it's always it's always about like second guessing yeah um it's not a, for me when that happens and it happens a lot for me actually is i'm worried about what other people are going to think yeah. when they read this and i'm, yeah. do, I'm second guessing what i don't, other think, people I don't think, think if i perform it it'll go down that well and what's actually yeah. really important to think is do i like it would i yeah. like to hear this and if you think yeah i would like to hear or read Focus or see on, this yeah actually probably somebody else yeah. is not every audience is going to get up and sure. is, isn't necessarily going to love it but. you're not going to please everyone <laughs> time sadly sadly <laughs> like, i wish you could <laughs> oh, really, yeah thank you that was a, that was a good conversation on on, on writing cool cool thank you cheers sir thanks for coming down though cool, cool. cool.